Okay, continuing on now, I've put together this chart. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, you all can look over it on your own, but I'll just say a couple of words here. First, on the left, we have this anti-enhancement position represented by Sandel, that article you guys read. And then on the right-hand side, this pro-enhancement position of Buchanan. Of course, he does specify, he says he's not pro-enhancement, he is anti-anti enhancement. In other words, he just does not want a blanket prohibition on all enhancements, many of which are already in use today. So the first here, uh, Sandel says, uh, you know, enhancement, if it becomes widespread, will lead to a shortage of lack of controls. Pretty <laughs> awkward phrasing there, shortage of lack of control. And to this, you know, Buchanan just says, listen, first of all, we're never going to have total control of life. But second, and more important in this context, um, the idea that there might be a shortage of lack of control if we have widespread uh, biomedical enhancement implies the belief by Sandel in a sort of genetic determinism. Now, what is determinism in general? It's thought to be sort of the opposite of free will. That's not quite correct. Um, but just for our purposes, determinism states basically, um, you know, if there is, you know, one particular state of the universe at time T, then there is exactly one possible state of the universe that will follow um, at time T1. So in the sense in which we are concerned with determinism, genetic determinism, the idea of genetic determinism is just that you are your genes. And of course, we know that's false. And sociologists will talk about stuff like nature versus nurture. Um, we uh, are concerned with the science of epigenetics, right? The study of the way that um, genes express or do not express. And we know that phenotype um, does not sort of directly follow from one's genotype, from one's uh, genetic structure, genetic material. And you could have a gene that manifests or does not manifest. The point is, uh, with regard to enhancement, that um, if we were to sort of, uh, you know, enhance at the deepest possible level, in other words, genetically enhance people, it still would not determine their destiny because you are not your genes. So it would give you a disposition or a capacity in one direction or another, but you would still not be reducible to your genes. So what Buchanan's saying, again, is just that if you buy this objection of Sandel's, then you are suggesting that you believe in genetic determinism, which we know to be false. Um, so second here with Sandel, um, we should reject enhancement because it's a sign of bad character or the desire uh, to enhance or enhancement represents this uh, derived to mastery. Um, Buchanan just says, no, um, you know, desire to improve is not a desire for mastery. The third here that Sandel talks about, we should maintain an openness to the unbidden or appreciate uh, the giftedness of life. And again, as I was mentioning a few minutes ago, um, we don't seem to want to be open to the gift of malaria. So we're kind of um, choosing selectively in terms of which um, sorts of natural things we want to be open to. And, and it's not clear why um, it becomes you know, immoral to reject uh, or accept a particular uh, artifact or unnatural thing. Um, uh, and, and then next here, Number four, the moral flabbiness problem, so-called. Uh, the moral flabbiness problem is just this idea that we shouldn't take shortcuts, right? Uh, we should reject enhancements because it'll make us lazy. Um, we should work towards our goals. We should work to become excellent and so on. And what Buchanan mentions, you know, with respect to this uh, objection is, listen, shortcuts are shortcuts. They open up new possibilities. So we do use computers. We do use calculators. We do use GPS. Maybe we can't triangulate our position in uh, space as well as we used to be able to 100 years ago because now we have GPS. But that allows us to do other things. It not only saves us time, but it frees up our capacities for um, further activities. So that's Buchanan's response to the moral flabbiness problem. Okay, good.